welcome back to this course on scanning electron ion prop microscopy in material characterization. Uh, in last uh, three lectures, we discussed on the introduction on the microscopy and also what is SCM and what is its capabilities. Today, we will begin to discuss on different parts of the SCM scanning electron microscope and their roles. Uh, the, these are the main component of scanning electron microscope that you see in the uh, cross sectional image presented in the left side. So, in the cross sectional image, uh, you see different uh, or major parts in the scanning electron microscope. In the right side, you see actual scanning electron microscope. Uh, at the top of this uh, scanning electron microscope, you see at the top there is an electron gun, we say, or electron emitters that would emit the electrons. And below the electron guns, we have couple of condensal lens, two condensal lens, most of the SCM use two condensal lens. Then after that, we have a pair of deflection or scan coils. If you remember, our in our SCM, electron beam in is scanned across the sample. So, these scan coils uh, would uh, allow the electron beam to scan across the sample. So, after the scan coils, we have objective lens we have objective lens and below the objective lens uh, we have specimen. So, up to the objective lens we have a column that you see a column. So, inside the column we have electron gun, condensal lens, deflection coils or scan coils and objective lens. Then below the column we have a specimen. So, electron beam will strikes on this specimen and at different sides of the specimen we have different detectors particularly for SCM as we discussed scanning uh, secondary electron detector and at the top as you see just below the column we have a backscatter detector because backscatter detectors will be backscatter towards the primary beam. Therefore, uh, backscatter detector is placed uh, just above the sample or below the column and uh, uh, there is a small hole at the middle of the backscatter detectors through which electron beam uh, pass and incident on the sample. Then uh, in the right side uh, that means one side of the uh, sample we have a secondary electron detectors. Secondary electron detector will detect the secondary electrons generated um, uh, from the specimen and then secondary electron detector uh, will be sent to the signal processing and they will be amplified and then will be presented on a display. So, here is the display, display length is let us say L and our uh, width of the sample is W then magnification will be L by W. And below the sample, uh, we have uh, different pumps uh, that would vacuum pumps that are used to keep whole of the system under vacuum. So, sample chamber will be uh, at a vacuum of 10 to minus 6 torr or similarly the column has little higher um, vacuum. So, so all, the, all the thing, all the system will be in vacuum because elect otherwise electrons will not pass or travel few millimeters. So, whole the sample chamber and column is under vacuum. So, now we will discuss uh, one by one uh, about this. Let us say first electron gone, it emits the electrons and then when it emits the electron, then those are accelerated towards the specimen with an energy range of 100 EV to 30,000 EV. This is the energy range we study in the scanning electron microscope, but most of the cases we use 5 uh, kilo electron volt to 10 kilo electron volt. Depending upon the type of the sample, uh, you will need to uh, use the accelerating voltage and that accelerating voltage will make the electron uh, to uh, strike the sample at a smaller wavelength because by providing the higher voltage, we can reduce the wavelength of the electrons. And then below the electron guns, we have a condenser lens. So, the condenser lens are electromagnetic lens and they are used to condense the electron beam or demagnify the electron beam. So, the electrons generated or electrons emitted from the gun uh, are uh, not condensed, they are not fine, they will go, uh, um, they, they, they produce in a larger width. So, condenser lens will condense the electron beam to a very fine or, or small size. After that, we have a deflection coils, so a pair of coils that will use to scan the electron beam in the x y direction, uh, it will produce a type of raster 
and that ratio of the raster and the length on the viewing screen to the specimen screen is nothing but magnification. So, after the deflection or scan coils, we have objective lens, this is the final uh, lenses in the column and th these objective lens will uh, not only converge the electron beam onto the specimen, but also it will focus on the specimen and then uh, that electron beams when incident on the sample, it will produce secondary electrons and it will be detected by the detector. So, the secondary electron detector will detect the secondary electrons, backscattered electron detector will detect the backscattered electrons and those electrons will be amplified and passed to the display screen to provide us the information that we seek. Then in the display, it converts the amplified signal to brightness and provides an enlarged image giving us a black and white images with different brightness. Then at the bottom, as we say, we, we have vacuum pumps which are uh, used to uh, evacuate the column and the specimen chamber. We will now go to discuss on different electron guns used in SEM. The role of electron guns is to provide stable electron beam, stable electron beam uh, and there are primarily four types of uh, electron guns. Uh, that is uh, used in the microscope, scanning electron microscope. The first two guns like thermoionic guns and lanthanum hexaboride guns are, therm are thermoionic guns and they are used in the old SCM. In present day electron microscope, mostly we do not use those. Uh, at present, mostly field emission gun or short key emission guns are used because they provide us much higher brightness, uh, smaller spot size. Uh, with um, much higher reliability and lifetime. Therefore, uh, uh, field emission gun and short key emission guns are used in modern day microscope and certainly they are a little bit more expensive as compared to the thermionic gun and lanthanum hexaboride gun uh, scanning electron microscope. So, let us first discuss with uh, thermionic gun. In the thermionic gun, uh, we have a, uh, uh, this is a, there is a filament at the top, that filament is a tungsten filament. So, that tungsten filament as the name suggests thermionic gun, uh, it is heated to high temperature, temperature is provided. Uh, it, it is heated to a temperature around uh, 2000 to 2700 Kelvin. Uh, when sufficient uh, energy is given by the temperature, uh, then what will happen? Electrons will overcome uh, the work function of the tungsten metal that is the between the Fermi level and vacuum level and then electrons will be emitted. So, uh, tungsten uh, metal is used as a filament because it has relatively low work function around 4.5 electron volt and it produces quite high cathodic current because here the filament is in cathode, cathodic, uh, cathodic current. Uh, and it is uh, another ad uh, advantage of using tungsten is that it is high melting point. Its melting point is around uh, 3700 Kelvin. So, as compared to its melting point, if it operated at a 2700 uh, Kelvin, uh, it can be stable and produce enough number of uh, uh, electrons which will be utilized for our microscopic study. Uh, so, after um, the tungsten filament, then we have a walnut cap, we will discuss about it and it, then there is a anode. So, anode will, uh, there is a potential difference between cathode and anode, therefore electrons will be accelerated towards the anodes with a high velocity, therefore the wavelength will change and then those electrons will be uh, brought downwards to strike or incident on the sample. Similarly, in case of lanthanum hexaboride gun, here also uh, this is just a another type of thermionic gun where uh, instead of tungsten we use a different material that is called lanthanum hexaboride. The advantage of uh, lanthanum hexaboride is that it has a smaller work function of a value 2.6 to 2.7 electron volt. Because it has a smaller work function, uh, we need uh, lower temperature uh, to generate electrons from lanthanum hexaboride uh, with a much higher brightness. It can produce around 5 to 10 times higher brightness as compared to the uh, tungsten thermionic gun. Uh, so, these two thermionic guns. Um, uh, used uh, in the uh, old days, um, in like several years back, uh, extensively these uh, thermionic guns are used in the electron microscope. Uh, and uh, uh, 
this L A B 6 gone uh, as I say it is uh, uh, has a lower work, uh, work function of 2.6 electron volt and it is operated at a temperature around oh, 1800 Kelvin much lower than the tungsten filament we use. Therefore, the lifetime of lanthanum hexaboride gone is much uh, higher than the tungsten filament. The lifetime of tungsten filament is around 50 hours as compared to lanthanum uh, hexaborides which is almost uh, much more than that. So, now the current uh, uh, cathodic current density that produced uh, uh, by this thermionic guns are like uh, can be uh, expressed as a uh, uh, Richardson e equation. How much cathodic current can be produced by thermionic gun? JC that is cathodic current density is nothing but SC uh, T square exponential minus phi divided by KT. So, here JC is the cathodic current density. cathodic current density S e is a constant which is equal to 120 ampere per centimeter square Kelvin square uh, T is the uh, temperature that is emission temperature emission temperature in Kelvin and phi is the work function phi is the work function of the material or of the cathode material or gone in electron volt. Uh, then K is the Boltzmann's constant. K is the constant. This is what uh, the cathodic current density produced as you see as we increase the temperature of the cathode then we can have a more higher cathodic current density. Similarly, if we have a smaller work function, we can have a higher cathodic current density. Then these are the thermionic gun, these are the two thermionic gun, then we have a field emission gun. Here a strong electric field is applied between the tip and the anode uh, and here also the uh, tip is made up of tungsten, but much finer uh, as compared to the thermionic guns, very fine sharp tungsten tip is used and when we apply voltage across the cathodic tip of tungsten and anode then what will happen uh, it will uh, a large field will be accumulated at the tip of the uh, tungsten wire and at the uh, at that high field electrons will be tunnel through the barrier barrier between the, the barrier is nothing but here work function electron will tunnel through the Fermi level to the vacuum level and will be emitted. Unlike the cases of thermionic gun where we need temperature to cross the barrier of work function, here by applying the field, by applying the field we can, uh, we can uh, pass the barrier, electron can pass the barrier before being emitted. So, in this case, in the field em emission gun, we do not need high temperature, it is operated at the room temperature. Only the requirement is that tungsten tip has to be very sharp. For example, in case of thermionic gun, the tips, tip size is around 100 micrometer. On the other hand, the tip size uh, in case of uh, field emission gun is approximately 5 to 10 nanometer, much smaller than that. So, this is what the field emission gun and then we have a short key emission gun here in case of uh, short key emission gun again uh, the, uh, the gun is made up of tungsten coated with a zirconia uh, ZRO2 uh, to reduce the work function Zir zirconia on a tungsten will reduce the work function from 4.5 to around uh, less than uh, around 2.6 to 2.7 electron volt. Uh, again here the tip is not sharp as tip as tip is not sharp just application uh, just by applying the field is not enough to make the electrons emitted from the surface. Therefore, again in case of short key emission uh, temperature is provided uh, to emit the electrons. Okay. 
we will go to little discuss more on that. First, let us uh, discuss more on thermionic electron con. Here, uh, it is here a filament, let us say tungsten or a lanthanum hexavaride and a high voltage is placed between the cathode and anode. Here cathode is given as a negative potential of around let us uh, as I say 100 electron volt to 30 kilo electron volt. So, cathode is at a negative potential and anode is at a ground. So, a high voltage is applied between cathode and anode. So, the electrons will be emitted from the uh, tip of the gun and will come down. Now, uh, as you see uh, in between, we have a grid or that is called well net cap. Well net cap that is what you have seen, uh, you see here, that is what you see here. Uh, and uh, if you you want to see a tungsten uh, electron gun, then I can show you a tungsten electron gun, thermionic gun. Okay, good. Uh, you see here a thermionic uh, gun uh, made up of tungsten filament, uh, which is uh, used in the early days of scanning electron microscope, early scanning electron microscope. This is a thermionic gun. At the tip, we, uh, at the top, we have a tungsten filament. And this tungsten filament uh, is has high melting points. Therefore, uh, it is suitable for uh, electron emission at high temperature. So, it is operated at, at, at around 2700 Kelvin. Uh, but its lifetime is not very good uh, as you keep uh, because we are operating at a much higher temperature of 2700 Kelvin. Slowly, slowly the tungsten will evaporate and once it evaporates, the filament will break. So, here that what you see a high voltage is uh, negative voltage is applied to the uh, gun that is the cathode material tungsten and then bottom we have a anode which is uh, at ground. Then we have a uh, well net or grid cap as you see this is this is what the well net and uh, well net is uh, used to again condense the electron beam to, to a much finer spot and because this well net is given as a negative potential, the electrons which are coming towards the anode, they will be repelled and, and produce a gun crossover of spot size that D0, this is around 50 micrometer size. So, our uh, tip was around 100 micrometer, from that we could get an electron beam uh, or electron beam spot of 50 micrometer size. So, the well net cap is, is um, act as a, the well net cap acts as a uh, valve in the triode gun. So, here uh, we have a one electrode is cathode, another is anode, that it is a, a control electrode or grid electrodes, which will control how much electrons will come from the cathode to anode, and that would produce a ground crossover. It is the first lens in the electron microscope, as we are just applying the potential. Therefore, it is just electrostatic ele uh, lens, first lens to go through the electron microscope. So, as you see this picture, we have in the top filament, then grid cap, then anode. For lanthanum of hexaboride gun, uh, we have a uh, lanthanum hexaboride materials which is mounted at uh, um, uh, on a support. Uh, it has uh, uh, advantage as I discussed, it has much uh, smaller uh, uh, work function uh, that is around 2.6 to 2.7. Therefore, uh, we can generate electrons at a much uh, lower temperature around 1800 Kelvin, this is operated and it provides us around 5 to 10 times higher brightness as compared to tungsten hairpin gun. Again, upon decreasing the tip radius to 1 micrometer, uh, brightness can be increased to a value of around 5 into 10 to the power 6 ampere per centimeter square. So, here is the pictures how uh, the um, lanthanum of hexaboride gun tip looks like and as we keep on operating for longer time, the tip will slowly slowly become blunt and uh, it will form oxide and then not suitable to produce enough electrons, uh, electrons and their brightness, brightness will decrease. Then we have uh, field emission gun. Uh, field emission uh, gone here, Fila important point is that um, filament is not heated. And when a, again negative potential is applied to the filament 
organ, uh, the electric uh, the electric field is concentrated at the tip. Uh, as you remember, I this I told that a very sharp tungsten uh, filament is used. The tip is very sharp, so that uh, by applying the field, uh, we can have much concentrated field at the tip of this filament. And when the uh, when the field at the tip reaches like around uh, 10 volt per nanometer, the potential is the potential barrier is reduced and becomes so narrow that electrons will tunnel through the potential barrier and emitted from the cathode. And most of the commercial uh, field emission gun, uh, uh, most of the commercial field emission gun tungsten is used because uh, tungsten can withstand la, uh, high mechanical uh, stress uh, produced at the tip by the field provided. Uh, but there are also um, cases where uh, it has been demonstrated uh, with uh, carbon nanotube and silicon nanotubes uh, for the field emission gun. So, as you see here the field, uh, field emission gun tip is extraordinarily uh, small, the size is less than uh, less than 100 nanometer and it can produce cathode current density 10 to the power uh, 6 ampere uh, per uh, uh, centimeter square as compared to 3 ampere per centimeter square for a thermionic gun, much higher cathodic current. And in the field emission gun, uh, in the field emission gun the tungsten tip tungsten tip plane is the tungsten is certainly a single crystal tungsten and it has the tip uh, planes of 310. So, uh, there are uh, two anode, first anode and second anode in, in case of field emission uh, gun. Uh, typically, 3 to 5 kilo electron volt is applied between uh, the gun and the first anode uh, to, uh, to produce around 10 micro am 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 ampere current and that is what that is called extraction uh, uh, voltage. Then we have second uh, anode which is uh, used for accelerating the electrons uh, that is called accelerators, acceleration voltage, accelerating voltage that is uh, the voltage between 0.1 kV to 30 uh, kV, this is kV electron volt. So, this is about uh, the uh, field emission gun. Uh, it has a certain advantage like as I say, as we have discussed, it is a very sharp tip. And therefore, the uh, electron beam uh, produced by the field emission gun is much smaller. So, therefore, uh, there is little deep magnification is required uh, for the electrons produced from the field emission gun. And in addition, it has a very small energy spread. So, the energy of the electrons coming out of the gun uh, is uh, very uh, with a narrow distribution. So, that is good to have a lower chromatic aberration and it is also highly reliable and reproducible. Then we have a short key field emission gun and here is again tungsten filament is used as you see in the photographs and this uh, uh, tungsten filament is a uh, uh, filament has the tip with a uh, plane of 100 plane, 100 plane and that is coated uh, at the middle as you see that is a zirconia reservoir and zirconia will be at high temperature zircon, uh, zirconia will come down and cut on the uh, tungsten filament 100 and a zirconia coated tungsten filament have a lower work function around 2.7 to 2.9 electron volt. But here the tip is not sharp, as tip is not sharp uh, even though we apply the field uh, it is not enough for the electrons to tunnel across the barrier and get emitted. So, electron tunneling become difficult in these cases uh, because the tip is not sharp. Therefore, we need to provide higher temperature uh, for this gun again to bring out the electrons from the surface of the tip. Here is the energy brain diagram that as you see in case of field emission gun, uh, in case of field emission gun we have a uh, much, uh, uh, we do not have energy barrier, uh, we do not have an energy barrier here there is no energy barrier here, but on, on, on other, other hand for short key emission we have a here is energy barrier, energy barrier here. So, therefore, we need temperature to bring out or emit the electrons. Again short key emitter can produce larger current as compared to the field emission gun, 
why it can produce the larger current because uh, uh, here tip is wider. So, more current more electrons can be generated from the tip therefore, current will be higher as compared to the very sharp tip in case of field emission gun. So, almost everything is same in case of short key and uh, field emission gun except that uh, in short key emission gun we have uh, we provide the temperature and the tip is much uh, wider tip size is larger uh, otherwise in both cases uh, uh, field is applied in one case temperature is applied in other case temperature is not applied. Then uh, talk about the electron gun characteristic we have uh, more, more, these are the very important parameters, most important parameter of the con uh, because uh, how much current it can produce and how stable is that current. Uh, that is what emission current density and second is the brightness, uh, third is the lifetime, what would be the lifetime of this con and the source size, source means the filament size at the tip what that is the electron con where the electron cons are generated that is our source. Then we have energy spread how much energy is spread uh, the energy that is generated and then we have a beam stability how stable is the electron beam generated from the uh, emitters. These are the uh, important gun characteristic uh, that would be determining the performance of a microscope. So, if we compare the electron gun performance we can see uh, we have a cathode material it can be tungsten that is tungsten hairpin gun that is thermionic gun then we can have a lanthanum hexavaride then we uh, in case of uh, cold field emission and, and another important that field emission gun where we do not use the temperature that we say cold field emission gun because it is operated at the room temperature there also we use tungsten as a material cathode material then in case of short key field emission gun where again tungsten is used which is coated with a zirconia and there we apply the temperature as you see the temperature maximum temperature applied to a tungsten hairpin gun is 2700 for lanthanum hexavaride it is 1800 then for cold field emission gun operated at room temperature on the other hand short key field emission is operated at 1800 uh, Kelvin because by coating with a zirconia we reduce the work function to 2.7 to 2.9 therefore we do not need much high temperature to go to emit the electrons and work function as you see uh, tungsten certainly has a work function 4.5 and uh, uh, by cutting with zirconia work function of the tungsten is reduced to 2.7 and in uh, lanthanum hexavaride we have 2.7. As per the brightness is concerned, brightness is uh, certainly not high uh, with tungsten hairpin for mining gun but that has increased, increased 10 times more with a lanthanum hexavaride. Then in case of cold field emission gun it, uh, it increased to a great extent 10 to the 8. Uh, ampere per centimeter star radian and similarly short key emission also very high brightness. Source diameter that means tip diameter uh, from where the electrons are emitted for tungsten hairpin it is around uh, 30 to 100 micrometer but for left 6 it is reduced to it can be reduced to 1 micrometer 5 to 10 micrometer but for cold field emission gone less than 5, uh, 5 nanometer because of the very sharp tip of size less than 5 nanometer we could uh, emit the electrons by just applying the field instead of temperature. In case of short key emission gun again the source tip or source uh, diameter is a little larger therefore, we need temperature. Energy spread that means energy of the electrons coming out of the sample uh, in case of tungsten hairpin it is 1, uh, 1 to 3 lanthanum 1 to 2 and as you see in case of cold field emission gun the energy spread or energy width is much smaller 0 0.3 that is good. Lifetime. Uh, tungsten hairpin normally uh, around 40 hours, 50 hours, 40 to 100 hours depending upon uh, the type of operation and lanthanum hexavaride around 1000 hours, 500 to 1000, both cold field and short key emission lifetime is more, more than 1000 hours. Beam current stability for tungsten hairpin it is uh, less than 1 percent, it is less than 1 percent around 1 percent, uh, lanthanum hexavaride uh, again stability is very good current fluctuation is less than 1 percent, but in case of cold field emission gone current fluctuation is more it is because of, of a very sharp tip that is widely used and in Scott key again because of little wider tip we have again less current fluctuation. So, in the today lecture uh, we have discussed about uh, different type of guns uh, and the modern as I mentioned modern microscope use field emission gun either cold field emission 
or short k emission gun. And the cathode material which with a smaller wire function is preferred because we need less temperature or less energy to overcome the barrier to get higher brightness. For thermionic emitter, temperature plays an important role to increase the brightness, whereas for field emitter, brightness increases with field strength. For high resolution image, cold field emission is preferred because it has a smaller uh, energy width and it has a also a smaller tip, smaller size tip. Therefore, we can have electron beam with a very small size and then we can get a better resolution. For lithography, texture measurement, biological sample, short key emission is preferred because that produce higher current and also it has more stable as compared to the field emission gun. So, these are the uh, references for uh, electron guns and other um, properties of the electron guns uh, and I thank you.